Let's look at some basic compliance requirements for writing a quality PLAF. All six academic and functional areas must be addressed. You will provide information and data in all areas that are related to the student's disability, and you will use the current data indicates no need for specially designed instruction statement in the areas that do not relate to the student's disability. Please use the district PLAF template, which has been updated, to ensure all areas are addressed and required information is included. A critical component of a PLAF is that it describes how a student's disability impacts how they access and make progress in the general education curriculum. Federal law requires that our PLAF includes information on how a student's disability affects involvement and progress in the general curriculum. The PLAF should provide an explanation of how the skill deficits affect the student's learning in the classroom. When the art committee knows how a student's disability is impacting them in the classroom, they can better determine the amount and type of services and supports the student needs to make progress. The PLAF provides a summary of the student's academic and functional performance. The PLAF statement provides a description of a student's strengths, needs, and an explanation of factors that impact the student's performance in the school environment. The PLAF statement will provide a snapshot of the student at a particular time and establish a baseline of the student's performance in academic and functional areas. You have to know where the student is to plan for where you want them to go. The PLAF is the starting point for which the rest of the IEP is developed. The PLAF provides information the ARD committee uses to determine the student's needs and what a student can reasonably achieve in one year. Not everyone that is on the ARD committee works as closely with the student in the academic setting as you, the case manager, or service provider. The other members on the committee rely on the information from the PLAF to develop the remaining components of the IEP. In addition to providing information to the ARD committee about the abilities of the student, the PLAF is also a source of information for others involved in their education throughout the next school year. The PLAF is the foundation for all services, supports, and goals that are in the student's IEP. The skill deficits and needs identified in the PLAF drive all other areas of the IEP. If a skill is identified as a weakness in the PLAF, it has to be addressed through an annual goal or an accommodation. If it is not identified as a weakness in the PLAF, then there is no need to address it through goals and objectives or an accommodation. The PLAF must be supported with current, objective, baseline data in the area or areas of need. Data should be taken within four to six weeks. If data was taken more than six weeks ago, it wouldn't be considered present levels. The only exception to this time frame would be on universal screeners that are only administered certain times of the year. However, if data from a screener is used and it is more than six weeks old, a more current source of data showing the same deficit would need to be included. Two or more data sources should be used to support a statement of skill deficit. When we state that a skill is an area of deficit, we want to make sure that it is corroborated on more than one assignment or assessment. If a skill is truly a deficit, it should be apparent in multiple places. Skill deficits identified should be specific, not broad categories. Example, you cannot say a student struggles with algebraic reasoning because there are many skills involved in algebraic reasoning. Instead, a specific skill should be identified, such as solving a two-step equation. The more specific the statement is, the better understanding the ARD committee will have of the student's challenges. Data sources used and skill deficits should be clear and easy to understand by all ARD committee members. The PLAF should be written in language that all committee members, including parents, can understand. Do not use acronyms or only test names and state the specific skills that were deficits. Example, if you just say Ames Web Plus, the parents probably don't know what type of assessment that is, nor which skills were tested. Or if you state a student is reading on a BAS level N, all committee members might not know which grade level that level N correlates. So be specific on the skills tested and explain the data sources used if necessary.